the idea of the work you're doing and being recruited overseas so that you don't have to struggle with all the things you're struggling for. Someone in the UK, someone in America sees the work, the talent, the vision, they're like, come help us do this. The brands are already there. Our platforms are here. You're going to make a lot of money. Just come here and leave Leave. No. that puzzle shop that you're busy with. So this is where I think is the opportunity. What happened to Josh? Josh went overseas mm. to do exactly what you said, mm. and he came back. And he came back because he was like, you know what? The problem in America is everyone, everyone's already done everything in America. Mm. We have not had our stories told. So, so whether this is strategic or by accident – Josh is building South African and African or well, South African stories that are getting global reach. And so he's earning dollars because his audience is getting, it's largely South African, but he's growing is international because he identified we are unique here. Yeah. They don't know anything about us. That's what I'm going to focus on. Brilliant. Right. Yeah. And even when um, uh, I'm over there, the uniqueness around just wearing this cap, sure. I met a thousand people a day just because of this cap. Yeah. Um, then how, what, you know, all these kind of African Americans who are so into Africa, they, they never fucking thought about Africa before. Yeah. Right. And so uh, they want, they want to talk about, they never even thought about coming in before it's madness. Right. So we are a mystery and we have great storytellers and we're doing great stuff. And that's why I think the, the opportunity is staying here. Mm. Yes. Go and build your networks. And that's why I say, if I can team pen up with, um, Joe Rogan, whatever and and what happens is that you grow your audience both remember we're all about audiences yeah. right so you've got your south african audience you've got a glass ceiling so now you want to build your kenyan audience and now you want to build your nigerian audience and maybe you want to build your american audience and how do you strategically do that mm. and it was you know me and mac discussed this for years but never really figured out how to implement this we thought maybe just go to america and interview some stars but it it wasn't it wasn't really the i think we were deep enough about it but this idea that if you if you can collaborate and you have an advantage being from here because these big podcasters in america and uk and europe they don't know much about here and they don't know who to get hold of Mm -hmm. and they've been here once on holiday with their wife to a game reserve that's their interaction right so by you being on their podcast you being on theirs you now have a new small market to build in the global arena. And when the Americans watch your video on YouTube, you're earning the dollars, not the rands. You only get your YouTube revenue and your audio revenue from the listener, not from you. So when a South African listener gets, watches your video, that's the sense you made. But if you're earning the dollars and the pounds, now you're growing your business into a global business from here as soon as you go to the to london america you're just another fish in the pond and you've lost the thing that gave you all your edge yeah i i used to be ignorant about that i remember complaining about why youtube plays pays americans more than us you guys are unfair you're discriminating and someone explained no it's based on the viewer if you make a video here gets watched by an american audience it means they're pushing american ads and you're getting paid in dollars which is much higher than here yeah 